Hi, this is uh, Tressa Graves, writer, director, producer, editor of uh, Sociopath. I don't know if I left anything out there other than uh, I actually lived all this except for the very ending. Uh, about 95% of this movie is, uh, more than 95% of it is accurate. I would say 98% of this movie is accurate. Um, so, yeah, I got into the... Wanted to do a story to help bring awareness and stuff, and this is what I did. So this movie opens up with an actual email that I had gotten from my uh, my stalker here. How does it feel to know we're watching you right now, crack whore? And this is my actress, um, Ashley, who is playing Michelle Teague. I put Michelle as a singer instead of a, a published author like me. Uh, to change it up a bit and as you see she's over here in the corner paranoid after getting that message of anyone that walks by her or anything she sees which is something that I dealt with myself so this is very true to what I've dealt with um, I just put you in a mind frame of uh, almost the one who is on drugs and they're paranoid of uh, any and everything that's the that's somewhere where you get to when stuff like this happens so we have Mike Ankrell here he plays Oli Van Buren and we have Gary Minix who plays Rod Hunter the main stalker um, in this movie, although both are equally as uh, dangerous. This is uh, Stieg Rom. He plays Sully Reiner. He is Michelle Teague's agent. And uh, he's trying to help her uh, with her fears and stuff, trying to convince her in this scene that, like in my case, the FBI and police, they all have this guy under control when in real life it's not it's not that rosy. <laughs> I would say this is no Disney movie, but uh, Disney movies aren't too rosy either if you think about uh, the storyline of some of those. But uh, this is Michelle. She's uh, at a loss, doesn't know what to do. She went to, she's letting her agent know that, you know, she's at Woodnote Cabin, which is where we filmed this. And she's trying to write a new album to get her career back. Uh, which is something that I've fought to do for a very long time um, to try and get my writing career back. The fan base and everything kind of disappeared for me, and I'm on an uphill struggle now. Um, and this is Michelle breaking down because she's been getting messages uh, through email, phone calls, uh, with me, it was also Skype in this, Michelle says, 686 messages in one hour. I got that. That is 100% true. That happened to me. Uh, videos of cats being tortured, uh, burned, legs broken, just all kinds of evil, evil things that I still can't get out of my head. I still... Uh, struggle with a lot of that because cats are my favorite and my stalker kind of took advantage of that situation that's why he's a sociopath because they try to get into your mind and very manipulating and there's no cure for a sociopath so this is going to be a struggle still but hopefully to get word out and help people so Stig here uh, Sully is uh, being patient, talking to her, trying to help her get her career back on, you know, once her back out on tour and everything, which is the same thing, you know, basically I'm, I'm trying to do. Before the stalking started, I was going out doing book signs. I had Bud Light doing advertising and, you know, I was all up and down the East Coast. I was going to Dick's Last Resort. Uh, all up and down the East Coast doing book signings. I was getting very well known selling my books. I had a lot of new projects that I had coming out and all that was just taken away from me um, overnight. Uh, this is Michelle here talking about uh, the 686 messages she got, uh, the cat videos being sent to her, 
um, talking about she's breaking, talking about she has a nine millimeter. I have a nine millimeter. Um, it got to a point where you think, hey, if I just do myself in, maybe he'll leave me and my family alone. Um, she talks about him doxing, which is what my stalker did, doxed me on porn sites. I actually had people come up to my house. He'll say it's not true, but it is true. I have, you know, my my uh, police reports and stuff. And then over here you have uh, uh, Mike and uh, Gary sitting next to her. That's what stalkers do. They follow you. And uh, Michelle is oblivious to them being there, which is what I always thought would probably happen because you get so caught up in certain things that your awareness, I guess, kind of drops. And with her here <sighs> explaining what, you know, she, she's going through and everything. That's where her mind is right now. Um, and she's documenting it. I had it where she documented it because I, I had the police tell me to document everything and do a true crime novel on it. And uh, that's exactly what, what I'm going to do once my police case is, is closed. Uh, a lot of people say five years, that's a long time. Well, there's a lot that's been going on and still going on to this day with the, the stalking I've, I've been enduring. So this was an emotional scene. It was hard to write. I w actually wasn't here whenever they filmed this. I was back at Woodnote Cabin. I was sick, um, really bad when I went to go film this. Come to find out, I've had a lot of uh, health problems, fibromyalgia from uh, the stalking. Um, and now it's kind of odd because I kind of walk with the cane, like Ashley really walks with the cane. And uh, Ashley was the perfect actress because she is going through what I went through, except her attacker actually got to her, beat her so bad that she walks with the cane. Mine is um, stress and uh, the psychological abuse, I guess you'd say. It caught up with me and uh, yeah, uh, as a result, I have fibromyalgia. But uh, this scene here, I had to cut. Uh, Steve wanted this scene cut. He said it was too long. I had it longer because I thought Ashley driving, thinking, and the song I had playing here, that I have playing here, really fits, I think, what, um, what I was thinking and probably what Ashley was thinking as well, um, whenever you're all alone. Um, and with her being a singer and it says, can you hear my voice? And I ju it, just, it just was a perfect song to use for, for this movie. I was, I was very happy to, to come across this. And here you'll see um, coming up in the rearview mirror here, some people probably have to watch a movie a couple times to see everything if they want to, but coming up in the rearview mirror here um, is a truck and it fo it's focusing on this truck. And uh, if you look at it, when the truck gets up close, the windows are rolled up. Um, and as a truck starts approaching, you could see the window kind of go down a little bit. This is, this is a creepy scene as well. Uh, Michelle's kind of a uh, little bit calmer here. She, uh, she's let her guard down a little bit because she did her video. Car passes her. And Gary is just creepy in this movie, and he's just staring at her, and she thinks nothing of it, and just, you know, waves. Um, and then here you've got Rod and Oli. Oli's inspired by an actual character, too. Um, some of the emails, I based him off a guy named Oliver. I got emails that I use in advertising saying Oliver and Ian are in your backyard watching you right now, you know, crack whore and all this other stuff that, um, that uh, he always uh, said to me. And uh, in this, Rian is supposed to be Ian, but I didn't want to, I figured I'd change the names up 
you know, for that. And the only reason I say Oliver and um, Ian is because I got uh, emails saying that these two people were in my backyard. So, you know, of course I'm going to post it, you know, and, uh, and let people know what's going on. I guess if these guys didn't want anyone to know, you know, it was really them, they wouldn't have let me know. Um, so here, they're cleaning up from attacking another woman because I know my stalker has other victims. I found out of a few. One of them is really sad that I found out about. Um, so I just took it into my own head that, yes, he's attacked other people. He's got many, many victims, I found out. Um, mine's just, I think, the most severe. But uh, so I took this part and took the opportunity to show just how evil Rod was and made it where they had just killed a woman and uh, they're plotting to kill uh, Michelle. And Oli here is talking about, um, you know, not, not really talking or challenging Rod. But Rod is so controlling that he doesn't want to hear anything. Everything has to go his way. He he gets triggered really easy. Um, and it kind of talks about uh, them two with their wives, wives swapping. I kind of have a, you know, that that might have really happened. Uh, I can't prove that, but I tried to take as much as I could. Uh, and put it into this film. That's why I said about 90, 98% uh, of it's real. I know he's got victims, you know. I don't think they've ever killed anyone, although they threatened to kill me. I, uh, you know, I don't know that for sure. But uh, took my fear and put it here. That's a creepy scene right there with Gary. Um, I was in the attic whenever they filmed this. It was hot, very, very hot. And uh, sitting across from these two doing the scene was really, really uh, scary. And like I said, I was really sick. I was out of it and wasn't feeling good already. And then to have these two monsters, you know, finally face to face with me, um, it was it was a challenge. Even though it was the actors, I knew exactly who they were. Uh, it was, it was, it was still hard. Um, and in my true crime novel, once that comes out, I'll be able to release a lot of stuff that, that has actually, um, happened, you know, because my court case would be over with and, um, yeah, so I gotta be careful what I say here, <laughs> but hopefully it, it will end soon. And I've learned how to move forward now um, and not let this person control my life the way um, he had done for about three years. Um, yeah, I was lost. I had a nervous breakdown. I was on sleeping pills. I was on Valium at the time. And I was drinking. Um, I was drinking a lot of vodka to try and cope. So I, I was in a bad shape. I was in bad shape. And uh, now I'm still kind of in a, you know, bad shape with the fibromyalgia and needing a cane to walk with. I hate it because it makes me feel old, <laughs> even though I'm not. But there are days I, I, you know, there are days I feel, I feel good. But I wish I'd have had more hands on with this movie because I would have done a lot of, um, things different, added a lot more to it, but I'm pretty happy with it. It kind of gets the message out. So they're up in the loft here and Michelle's walking by oblivious because they had passed her on the uh, interstate earlier. So they made it there before she did, uh, hit their car or, or hit their truck. And now they're up there in the loft, uh, watching her walk by, uh, just relishing the fact that they're watching their prey and like a snake, they're just waiting for the perfect time to attack this 
this poor woman who's virtually done nothing to them. Um, which is kind of what happened to me. It was a crazed fan that worked his way in and uh, me trying to be nice, I really got paid back, I guess. And here when Gary, oh, God, Gary was looking at me there. And it's like, just keep moving, Gary. Just keep moving. <laughs> it was really, really uh, creepy. And then Mike following behind, old Oli, doing everything his old senior tells him to do because the two seniors stick together no matter what. They should be a, uh, ashamed having a wife and kids, you know, going around attacking um, a woman the way they've done with me. It's pretty pathetic, but it takes all kinds to make the world, I guess. So as you see, um, Ashley really walks with the cane. Um, and we had to be very, very careful with her with a lot of the scenes to make sure she didn't get hurt and keep her, you know, comfortable with the subject matter. Um, I remember her telling me uh, certain scenes whenever she got in this mood where she was um, scared, she would look for me and stare at me and it helped her through it. And that has to do with the fact that both of us have been through what we have, you know, we kind of got a bond because of that. This part here is really, really scary. This is all my worst fears right here. Turn around and then poof, and it goes perfect with the music I put here. Um, Oli, you know, the coward he is watching uh, Michelle. You know, covered his face, family man, uh, not wanting his friends and family members and the public to know what he really is. Um, so he hides it well. He hides well. Uh, this part I wasn't around for either, but I thought it was a good scene to add. This wasn't in the original script. So um, Michelle walks outside after she gets home and I told you about the paranoia and everything. Now that she's back at the cabin alone, it's a whole different story. So she goes outside, look around. It's actually beautiful out back there. Um, and I've actually got the movie slowed down so that way I can get as much in as I can. And she sees Gary out there. Uh, Rod Hunter standing out there. She looks back in to see if she sees anyone in the house, anyone at the front. Looks back up. Oh, he's gone. Was it all in my head? Uh, let me look around a little more. And she looks. And this one is a really, really, really creepy scene because it actually shows more of Gary's body. Um, it had a scene where it showed him walking. I don't think, I think that scene might have gotten cut. Nope, there it is right there. It shows him walking towards her. She turns back around and he's gone. So was it all in her mind? Is there really anyone there? She's not quite sure what's going on right now. So she walks back inside. Looking around one more time. No one's close by. Locks the door. And trying to keep it all together. And me, I had made a lot of calls to the police because I had heard stuff outside. To this day, my house is on a property watch for Knox County. Um, and you hate doing that. But 
uh, something when you're going through this you have to do so Ashley is uh, trying to stay calm and still move forward um, been there many many times I used to take my uh, nine millimeter into the bathroom with me even when I took a shower boarded up the house for a year was in counseling for a year um, wouldn't go outside I didn't go outside for a year uh, didn't get much sunlight for a whole year um, had boards and bars in the window security when I went out in public I took um, my uh, security guard with me JJ um, I'd go to the park he would walk with me anywhere I wanted to go I always had to have someone with me and that kind of got old because sometimes I wanted to get out on my own and do something here she hears uh, something out again uh, Rod Hunter with his uh, hep C and crack cord and I mean the dialogue hasn't changed for <laughs> for five years I don't plan on it changing now it's the same old stuff <laughs> kind of that same shit different day you wake up and you're like okay what am I today a crack whore hep C whore AIDS um, you know doctors up my videos and posted those um, told everyone I was uh, that I had hep C I actually had people coming in saying they were sorry to hear it and it's just like no I don't have hep C that's that's the stalker <laughs> doing all that so this um, this song here was perfect I want to destroy something beautiful this is absolutely the perfect song for this movie it's almost like it was written for it um, very very creepy talks about I give you 30 seconds to disappear and if you don't get out of here who knows um, says it and I want to know if an angel bends or breaks well I broke but now I'm bending uh, Gary standing out there look at that imagine being home alone and seeing something like that <laughs> looking in your window but of course Michelle doesn't know any of this because she is uh, in the shower which it, we had her go into the downstairs bathroom there uh, cut it and then we went upstairs because the bath the shower there was really small so we went upstairs and she's actually <laughs> upstairs in the in the shower upstairs at uh, a Woodnote cabin so we just cut it and moved it up there look at this this is this is crazy um you know how many times i've opened up my front door or something and you know think oh my god what if uh rod's actually there I actually woke up one night I had a dream that my stalker was in the room with me and it was a very very hard dream um, it was very real it's like I was awake he was standing there looking at me and of course all I heard was crack whore so but here's uh, Mike now going inside the house creeping around hunting his victim down because that's the thrill of the catch uh, and my stalker he liked to uh, torment uh, mentally um, mentally break you down and uh, and the FBI finally got involved whenever he sent the videos with the gunshot to my head and that was when the Knoxville FBI got involved it was really cool because <laughs> little Knoxville Tennessee um, my stalker is actually over in Australia he's an American citizen so uh, we're dealing with two different countries is what has taken so long as well so um, yeah he uh, so it takes a little longer um, whenever it's 
uh, overseas like that. But uh, yeah, they finally got involved and it was really cool because two Knoxville FBI agents were actually over in Australia at that time. It blew me away. <laughs> so that really helped me out a lot. It's like, okay, something finally fell in, uh, fell in line for me here. And during the shower scene, Ashley's like, you better not get my uh, tatas online. <laughs> So uh, I was real cautious with that. Me and Philip Ossenmacher, we were the only two that was in the bathroom with her. We kept, this was a close set. We had like tons of actors but uh, and crew, but everyone, no one was allowed on set here. And whenever we did the shower scene, Mike and uh, Gary, I don't even think they were in Woodnote Cabin at the time. Um, because I wanted uh, Ashley to be as comfortable as as possible for the for the show, the not the show, the movie, um, and so it was very very secure set that we had here. It's like everyone out, <laughs> everyone go find something to do, and Mike climbing upstairs. Um, creepy. I wanted to get kind of an Alfred Hitchcock feel for this. This is my Alfred Hitchcock moment in this movie. Um, in Psycho, there was one scene, a shower scene that everyone remembered. I know people are going to think I'm crazy because I may never make it to <laughs> that status. Um, but I wanted it to have that creepy uh feeling the sneaky it doesn't have a lot of blood in it it's just a psychological thriller um i guess slash horror uh slash true crime <laughs> so it's so it's a little bit of uh of everything here and just having you know Mike walk around, do some of the things he does. Very creepy, very sinister. Really no no purpose to anything they do. Anything they're doing in real life or anything that they're doing in this film. Um, it's just for the pure torment and misery of another human being. And like I said, all of these people have been stalking me. It's a gang stalking and they're all married and they all live what they call normal lives. No one that they hang out with knows about any of this because the case is still open and I haven't been able to say much. So they've been able to, you know, run free thinking that nothing's ever going to happen to them for doing what they've done. Mike coming around the corner, camera up on him, just those masks, they were so hard for them to wear too. They were uh, small because they're both big guys. It was hard for them to see. So whenever you see them walking around touching stuff, it's because they couldn't see <laughs> where they were going. I had them wear all black. It was hot. It was, I think, the middle of summer. Uh, still wasn't my kind of hot because I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. This was up in Michigan, so to me it wasn't hot. <laughs> well, it was up in that attic, I will say that. But uh, but I slept through most of this. Um, I, I was only there for two scenes. That was the scene and the ending scene. I think I slept through the entire filming because of uh, because of health issues. And this part here with Ashley, this was not in the script, which was okay with me. We were all downstairs. Philly yells. Shut up, everyone. I'm filming up here. <laughs> everyone goes silent. And Ashley just starts belting out the song she had written. 
called Lost. And it fits the movie because, like I said, what she had gone through and what I had gone through. So we kind of um, have clicked and me and her still talk. She's still dealing with her issues and I'm still dealing with mine. Uh, sometimes things don't go away as quick as you'd like them to. Um, I gave her my necklace to wear here. Um, she's so pretty. <laughs> she's gorgeous. And uh, I gave her that necklace to wear. And she wore the necklace for the scene. Uh, when I was there, I had gained a lot of weight. Um... And actually now I've gained even more because of the fibromyalgia. I can't get up and walk, um, get on a treadmill or really do any of that anymore. Hopefully that will change if I can get this under control. Um, but yeah, looking at Ashley, it reminds me of me when I was out on book tour. Um, you just feel pretty. Um, and she was, she was, she was absolutely beautiful inside and out and the song fit the movie perfect. And I just said, well, yeah, we can keep that. I love it. I remember I was downstairs and when she finished, I just started clapping. <laughs> it was like I was really at a concert and it was weird because I didn't know she could sing and to have her play the part of Michelle Teague, who is a singer. Um, everything works out the way it should, when it should. And that's what happened with this movie. Also with the editing and everything, um, I had to do this whole movie. I've never edited a movie, don't know anything about it. So I did all this. This was the first time I've ever done anything. Um, I was supposed to have help, but that didn't work out. And I was kind of stuck doing it on my own, um, which was really scary because this is the main movie that uh, my agents want to get in front of um, movie studios, which I should have had that a long time ago because we were actually working on getting me into um, a few movie studios, but then the stalking started and I lost out on all that. So I'm trying to play catch up and get back into it. And everyone's interested in someone else's misery. So this might do it. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe when the true crime novel comes out, um, some of the parts in the true crime I'm not going to be able to write, I don't think. I'll have to have someone else do it, the parts with uh, the cats and stuff like that, because I don't do well to this day with that. This part, the lighting kept changing. I don't know what was going on um, with this, but Ashley was up in like the loft of Woodnote Cabin with Philly and not sure what was going on with that but I tried to fix it as best I could. Remember, this was my first movie ever. So trying to get this done was, but you know what? Like I said, things work out the way they do when they do. It was, it was my true crime and uh, I was the one who did everything in it. So maybe that's how it was uh, meant to be, who knows? So she's all, you know what? I got this. I'm going to get back out there. I'm going to get my career back. And these two assholes with their other buddies are not going to stop me. And I had mentioned Rian um, before, which was based off the character, while well, the real person, Ian, that my stalker had mentioned that was in my backyard. I know who this person is, but um, he was the one at the beginning that uh, Ashley was talking with Stieg about, uh, came in and beat her up and made her have to walk with the cane. And that was actually uh, Rian. 
which is one of the other monsters that I was told was in my backyard uh, watching me, men on the street watching me. Um, had I always pictured, you know, them showing up and watching me, filming me, putting me online secretly, catching me at my worst moments because when you're in the public eye, everyone looks for the worst of the worst to put up. And uh, that's what um, that's what I always, you know, thought would would happen. And a lot of stuff did happen like that, but it wasn't true, of course. Um, can't come up with anything truthful at all, but this is a hobby, <laughs> stalking. <laughs> And uh, Mike looking in the windows here, he did a great job. At first, he didn't want to take the role because he was scared that the stalker would come after him. And he was going to turn down the role to begin with. And then he decided, you know what? Screw these people. I'm going to go on and do the role. So he was supposed to do Rod. And then Gary came along and he did Rod perfect. And uh, Mike reminded me of uh, what Oily, Oli um, really uh, looked like body-wise and all that stuff. So Mike had that down very, very well. So it was a very important part for Mike to take on because he's the he's the number one senior to um, uh, Rod and senior is the CB uh, jabber that goes back and forth between people who like to pretend. Um, yeah, <laughs> so. So, uh, Michelle here is coming back out, and if you remember, she had left her phone on the table, and when she comes out, the phone is no longer there, and she's like, I, you know, I know I left this phone there, and then she looks up, and lo and behold, coward number one is there, Oli, um, tormenting, of course. Uh, so Michelle turns around to go out and we have the other coward at the door here and Gary coming in here was terrifying. I was here for all of this and this was a part that no one was definitely allowed on set for. Uh, and you'll, well, I mean, you've already watched the movie. So when Ashley was laying there and, you know, bra and underwear and stuff, so yeah. And when Gary grabbed her by the hair, he told her how to do it. He's got a long history. He's done a lot of movies. He's got an impressive IMDb. And uh, he told Ashley how to do it so she would not get hurt. And here's the ending scene where she's laying there. Her two captains have her. And they were very careful, hardly holding her down because of the injuries she had had. I was standing over her. If you see her, she'll look up. I think she was looking at me at that time um, to calm herself down. Um, I think it was when they broke into the house, when Gary came in, I broke down crying. I broke down crying. And I don't remember if it was Gary or Mike that came over and they were just hugging me. I just could not stop crying. It was so real. And it was very hard for me to, to handle. So this here background that Ashley's laying on was a green screen. So when it was found, the green screen wasn't laid out, right? I don't know why. And we couldn't really do too much with it. So Stephen Roberts, who helped me produce this, he went in and just made it look like a black rug. So that's kind of our goof up in this uh, film is that damn green screen. And just didn't know how we were going to do it. And then Stephen came up with the idea of um, I'm just going to make it look like a rug. 
these knives before I left to go to Michigan I bought at Publix <laughs> where shopping is a pleasure of course so I bought two we ended up using this knife on another set uh, Phantom which is the next maybe that's going to be coming out and that's only got one actor in it it's got uh, Mike Ankrell and at the end it's got a Maya and it she played in Teddy Bear Girls she's a, a child actress who did a great job I had bought her a bunch of gifts and bought her a Minnie Mouse shirt and all this stuff when I went up there to uh, to see her she's adorable fell in love with her and of course um, Rod's sitting here talking about I'm not gonna basically rape you I, do, I wouldn't want to give hep C uh, to my wife you know and both these guys their wives knows what's going on and they're all about it they don't care um, no shame at all and of course she's begging they're laughing this was tough but this was the this was the fear I had was the knife uh, coming up from behind when I went to counseling I'd have a police officer come out and get me and literally walk me into the building because I went to the police station to get the counseling done and uh, they would walk out and walk me inside the building and once I was done they'd walk me out and here it comes right here this was a angle we didn't have Ashley Lane there at the time um, we had a cup or something with homemade blood in it and that was the blood that you had on there and he goes back into it this part with this knife when he goes into her neck and whenever it showed him inside of her uh, abdomen with the knife we took it to a shop here in Knoxville to get it cut down the knife that I had bought at Publix before we left and made sure it wasn't sharp uh, so no one would get hurt I still have the knives they're both here and I've got the mask as well and this part here is uh, Gary urinating on his victim um, well, this is a blooper because you could see the tube I was behind him with the tube I had made food coloring I think I had uh, yellow food coloring and mixed it in water and that's what we had coming out of this I was behind Gary with the syringe pushing it out while he was holding it and that's how we ended up during that scene I bought all that from Rule King it's really funny <laughs> where I got some of these props from first movie man you don't know what you're uh, doing you know all you know is you want to get this on screen and get the message out so that's all I wanted to do I wanted to wear this and get the message out of of what was happening and this part coming out wasn't in the scene and Mike and Gary both added dialogue here which I was really happy with um, because it came natural to them and it just flowed better with them to uh, talking and they're they're taunting her after she's dead so Gary here he throws his mask on top of um, Ashley as he still taunting her and uh, Mike does the same thing I actually had both of them sign the mask and I've got them hanging up in my office they're sitting over me right now I'm looking at both of them uh, as I do this but uh, yeah they, they throw the mask on her they walk out now whenever you hear Gary go whoopies whoopies that's real that was videos that he had sent to me it was like fwing 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 whoopies and so it was important for me to get that in there to show how crazy <laughs> you know who who does that stuff you can't make up so this movie's got stuff in it you're like who in the hell thinks that to write something like that well I lived it so it's it's crazy and I still got all those original videos that, that the stalker uploaded so here's Stig again this was not in the original this was filmed a few days before this movie came out I contacted Stig I said hey will you do an ending scene for me and you be the one to close out the movie 
<laughs> so he ended up doing this where uh, at the beginning he told Michelle to call him once she got back to Woodnote Cabin and she didn't. So I wanted to have that little bit of closure at the end that I hadn't had before. So this was all new. So Steve's upset here, Sully Reiner, and he was also the executive producer on this as well. And Sam Hamilton, uh, who I'm married to, was the executive producer. Steven was the producer. Um, and here he is worried trying to get a hold of uh, his main star. Uh, Michelle Teague to get her back out. <sighs> crazy, crazy, crazy scenes, crazy story, crazy dialogue. What's not crazy? Um, about this movie and you guys can go to my website and read my bio over there look at some of the videos i've got up if you find stuff on the internet don't believe everything you see <laughs> i got a message the other day saying oh you're known on the internet as a crack whore and when b before that scene was over with uh steeg i had uh my female singer to come in and I started that music before the scene even cut because he was so worried about her and this is her singing this is singing the song about what all she's been through and I just thought it I just thought it very very creepy so the lady who sung the song did not want credits in this because she was scared that uh, they would come after her and her family so she did not want credit for anything she just wanted to be a part of it uh, to be a part of this so her name is nowhere in this film I sent her an email telling her thank you my gang girl actually found her and uh, we wanted Ashley to sing the part but with all the problems Ashley uh, was having with uh, her stalking she's had medical as well um it was hard to get her pen down to do that so mike uh ended up finding this other lady who worked out perfect um and screenplay of course <laughs> it should be instead of screenplay lived by uh tressa gray <laughs> but uh now this is based off a series of short stories called the Stalking Monsters series, which Stieg is working on that as well to get me into uh, movie studios. So I've got seven parts of those written, seven or eight, I don't remember. Um, so I haven't released those because we don't know what's going to happen just yet. Um, hopefully, I will know where my career lands soon uh, with this film. I have to say I am nervous because I was the one who uh, put everything together on my own. Steven Roberts helped out so much, um, but there was only so much, you know, both of us could do. And I, I'm going to brag because I taught him a few things, so he's probably going to chew me out when he hears this. <laughs> I taught him a few things and we were actually working on two different video programs he was working on one I was working on another so we couldn't sit there and say well go here go there go here because it was two different um, video apps that we use video makers and visual effects I think we made the blood with I had Hershey's cocoa um, 
Kero Syrup, maybe? I don't remember. But I know Hershey's Cocoa and Red Food, food Coloring was a big part of this. Um, I wish there'd have been maybe more blood whenever, you know, Ashley was attacked. And this closing, this is like a 1970s horror film right here, which is why I love it. Um, I just played around and put a bunch of stuff together. And here we go. This is the ending of what I ended up, uh, doing. Stunt coordinator, of course, went to Gary because he had, you know, told us safe ways to do um, stuff whenever it comes to grabbing um, Ashley and everything to bring her out once they broke into the house. Location manager. Um, I had... Uh, put together a deal with uh, Woodnote Cabin, Alana Rose, to get us in there to film all my movies. So all of my movies were filmed at Woodnote Cabin in Milford, Michigan. All my actors and all my film crew and everything is in Michigan. So anytime I need to do something like that, I have to drive up there, which I don't mind because I actually love Michigan. It reminds me of... <laughs> Florida a lot because of the uh, overgrowth. So the intruder music was when they were watching her before they had come in. May Day was when Ashley was driving in the car, which I said was perfect for that scene because of what she was going through. Uh, this end beats here, they were... Um, that was some really cool music that I found. Really, really scary for the parts. I think that was the part when she first came in and Mike showed up at the window as soon as she walked in and shut the door. And here's the one I love, Josh Woodward. I want to destroy something beautiful. I have that song on repeat. <laughs> I love it. And then, of course, it fades into uh, Mike here, Oli. Um, and the music credits, you know, Ashley with Lost. I like the way Mike is there and you can still see Gary in the background. Just, I got a 70s, early 80s horror film to this. And Mike did the title song. The whistling that you heard at the beginning, that was Mike Ankle. And the song here at the end is uh, Mike Ankrell. And that's pretty much the story, the behind the scenes, all I can say right now until, well, it, 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 a, a lot more could be said, but just can't do it right now. Um, hopefully this gets out anyone who's going through what I'm going through because there's so many suicides happening online from being bullied and stuff. So hopefully this movie, if anything, will get out there and it will help others and it will help inspire people to not give up. And of course, I've got my special thanks to Knox County Sheriff's Department, Nari Warren Police Station, which is in Melbourne, Australia. Of course, Knoxville FBI is in there. Um, and then we have R. Dino Cole on there, um, who has really, really stuck by me through this. Um, he's my attorney. And I asked him if he wanted to be in the credits. He said, yes, put the R in front of my name and we're all good. <laughs> so I did that. Now Knoxville FBI and Knox County Sheriff has uh, IMDB up because they didn't have one before. So thank you for watching. If anything, I hope you get word out on this and uh, go to my website, check out some more of my works, some of the true crime, some of the actual videos the stalker has sent and uh, 
I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much.